Hey guys, on here, we are back for Andor episode nine. Last episode saw Cassian getting used to his new prison arrangement, but a lot of the episode two was flipped and showed us a lot of the investigation that is happening with this alert that the attack on Adani has sent out to the Empire. And we're seeing the ISB respond. Deirdre's been able to follow up on a couple of breadcrumbs that are leading her back to Ferrix through Blevins reports and to Cyril and some revelations about some not so great paperwork that was being done on that initial report that's kind of a lot of things that got swept under the rug. Is that Brev Blevins cutting corners or not paying no mind to any of the stuff that's going on, not taking it seriously, or could he possibly be a mole? Who knows? I guess we'll find out all that stuff. It was just really intriguing seeing that whole investigation on that side of things. The Empire was seriously not joking at all when they were talking about cracking down and doubling down on everybody in the galaxy after that display. Um, and we see that really affecting Ferrix as they've kind of stationed themselves now as dangerous, poking around, looking for Bix, looking for any known associates with Cassian and all that to get some information. So... That said, we're going to go ahead and hop in. If you want to see the full-length reaction, remember it's on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. It is in watch-along format. You also get access to the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel. You get to suggest and vote on what movies we react to each month. You also get monthly Q&As, behind-the-scenes footage, or try to make it worth your while should you are going out of your way to support the channel. But of course, I know never can do that, and a simple way you can help us out is just by liking, comment, subscribing, sharing these videos, because it really does go a long way with helping the channel grow here on YouTube. We're almost at 40K. If you're tuning in for the first time or maybe been a long-time lurker, I'd really appreciate it if you maybe enjoy the reaction. You'll consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. With that all said and out of the way, guys, let's go ahead and hop into Andor Episode 9. Here we go. You know, the, I like this a lot, actually. It fits in with like what I was saying like last episode where it seemed like we were the, the voiceover, the announcer voice that we heard on the intercoms on the prison facility sounded like the MCP from Tron, if you're unfamiliar. So, like, this does have a little bit of a Tron vibe to it. Though I don't think that's the intention, but that's where my brain's going. We tracked him to a radio hidden in his yard and thought he might cooperate without encouragement. For a man with very little actual rebellious activity on his resume, he was remarkably resistant. Mmm... He met a woman who suggested that if he was serious about politics, he might like to act as liaison for Ferrix when he returned home. He was sent the fractal radio unit he used. Mm, interesting. Did you know you were the only one to use it? Were well, you aware that the buyer, your contact, met Park only once before being turned over to you? Hmm. I don't know the buyer. Well, Simon Park says you've had at least six meetings he's aware of. He says you sit up on that radio. Damn. He and Andor blowing up buildings and killing security guards. You're injured trying to warn them. Your co-worker is killed trying to win your freedom. Andor and the buyer escape together. Sounds to me like a nest of relationships. When was the last time mm. you spoke with Cassie and Andor? She's good. She's got her info. That's what they're about, man. She's all yours, Dr. Cost. Thank you. Ah, uh, the fake choice. The false choice. This is all up to you. You got this. Up till now, it's your choice whether or not we torture you or not. Nope, that wasn't going to happen at all. There was no way she was going to get out of that, no matter what she said or gave up. New man for them today. Always the next day, right? The United Group. <laughs> He's getting the patterns down. They created such a stir that the local commanders were granted permission to use any means necessary in them. Um, well. What's important for our purposes here today? <sighs> they were exterminated. They make a sound as they die, a sort of choral, agonized pleading. There were three communications officers monitoring the documentation, and they were found hours later, huddled together in, in various states of emotional distress in a crawl space beneath the ship's bridge. We've taken the recordings and modified them slightly, layering, uh, adjusting, 
and we found a section of what we believe are primarily children, which has its own particular effect. Oh, and if you're having difficulty speaking, just shake your head from side to side. <laughs> That seems like, just depending on how this goes, that might just be a normal response, though. To the stimulus. I kinda wanna hear it. <laughs> oh man, that's insane, though. I love that, though. Oh, he in on it. When was the last time you spoke with Cassian Andor? There's a witness. She's the only one we've got who can identify Axis. And Salmon Park? I don't care. I'd like to hang him. What's left of him, anyway? Make sure they know who's in charge. As you wish. I'd like to hang him. What the fuck? The oh! Chandrilla stands with those in opposition to Hello, we're back. The legislation. Is there a more important issue facing this body right now than imperial overreach? The public order resentencing to mm. Those of you who still believe that when we enter this building, we are in a temple. Oh man, that's so overpowering, so disheartening. Though you did hear your cousin at the embassy. She's there now. Well, they said you'd want to know. Hmm. It's interesting. Like the you could vocally hear the varying points of view. You had people being listen to her. She's right. And then you had like ignore her. Blah blah blah. Long live the empire. And then just a bunch of people just turning off their podiums and leaving. Level two, are you all scrambled or something? It takes a week for one word to get all the way up here, and you're panicking about something that's happening on the other side of the building. Mm. What is going on? What was going on? <laughs> She brought me. Your father may have an opinion. We'll see if he lets you wear it. He lets me do anything I want. Oh, holy crap. Vel's her cousin? About escaping? You know, I won't answer that. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. Take what you like. You flat that mouth if you really like. <laughs> How many shifts do you have left? 217. So. Tell me what you know before you go. You've been warned. You think they're listening? You think they care enough to make an effort? Like you would know. I know this. They don't need to care. All they need to do is turn this floor on twice a day and keep their numbers rolling. Why bother listening to us? We are nothing to them. Melch is right. We're cheaper than droids and easier to replace. <laughs> I'm loving this shit, dude. I love it so much. Andor returned to Ferex three nights after Aldani with money in his pocket. Couldn't that be from the sale of the star path? They left it behind, right? You're trying to connect Aldani. Mm. And two soldiers from the garrison who got a look at him felt there was some similarity to our reference picture. Well, that's worth running down. An Aldani connection would certainly amplify interest. Let's follow that up. Damn. She's our bait. She's the reason Andor came back. Perhaps they communicate. If they are, we'll know. We're on her full time. Shit. I uh, see what he's saying, like for them to communicate from window to window and for them to form and get, gather these words if something happened on like the bottom levels and all that stuff and like pop, 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 it takes a while for it to go and who knows telephone could be a huge part of the the game being played 
He said they fired the whole bridge. Speak up. He told Zinska. Why? What the hell? Ask him. They're all dead. They fried a whole bridge. Oh no! That choice of words. He tr he's really adamant about things going great until he leaves, and he was like, "That was them setting them free." It's a rumor. Maybe it's true. He's so. We have heard nothing. It's just another day. Another shift. So let's keep our mouths shut, keep our heads down until we know what's going on. They had a clean record too, right? That floor, that team, which is like his whole game, right? Is keeping everything smooth and rolling. They're not going to let him out, man. The clock's ticking down and it's not going to matter in the end. That's, that's at least how I interpreted the situation. I could have that wrong, but... Look back just months ago when you mm. could easily ignore me. Imagine. Imagine I cracked. <laughs> and this guy here seems like he's gotten... He's coming down with some dementia or something. He's forgetting thing conversations they just had. He's having trouble keeping up with everybody. That's it. That's it. Right. Okay, let's go. Oh, it's not going to bode well for the long term here. Come on, boys. Mm. Just the one night, though. Just the subtle ways it's changing every every shift. Darling. We were in grade school together. At least you've not gone political, Val. All the interesting people are getting very tedious these days. No one ever calls me tedious. <laughs> Anything I can do? Yes. Be a spoiled rich girl for a while. Remind people that's who you are. I'll try. That brings us back to that comment Centra made about her... We've chosen a side. Uh... We're fighting against the dark cover story when they were on Ferrix. Hmm. Is he waiting, hoping to run it? Yep. I had nothing to do with it. Well, my boss seems to think that you did. We simply gave you a clean bill of health. Oh, so do they scrub his record for helping? Are you stalking me? I know you work here, and I come sometimes to see if I'll see you. <laughs> Just being in your presence, I... I realized that life was worth living. I realized that if nothing else, there was justice and beauty in the galaxy, and if I just kept going. Perhaps my deranged belief that there was something better faded for me in the future was a dream worth clinging to. Have you arrested? You're aware of that. I want what you want. You're out of your mind. I have already given you a second chance. You come near me again, you pursue any of this, and I swear I'll have you in a cage on the outer rim. Maybe not the best play, but ambitious. We need to be sure that the work you've done so far isn't going to come back to haunt you. That can't all be hidden. There's a 400,000 credit withdrawal that's proving a bit of a problem. It appears on the ledger, then it vanishes. It needs to be papered over. Mm. How much trouble am I in? There's no trouble at all unless they scare It all the comes case. down to the paperwork, man. Time Space IRS are going to get you. You have someone in mind. It's not a long list. And yet you're afraid to say who it is. Davos Calden. He's not a banker. He's a thug. The wealthiest thug of them all. Don't tell me you've spoken to him already. I wanted to bring you a solution. If you told him that you're feeling constricted by the new tax laws, it's common enough. A senator, 400,000 missing, what would he think? I think it's just like everyone else he works with. You want what's yours. At what cost? I'm not sure. I could keep looking. Damn. 
She's going to have to go this route. She's going to have to dirty your hands in some way to keep playing the game. There's too much at stake if I were Krieger, I'd be suspicious. We want Krieger moving forward. What if we foul the ship? An accident, something mechanical. Have the pilot found dead in the cockpit, what would happen? They'd have to find it, but they'd tow it into Kafreen. If we did it quickly, staged it properly, let it drift into traffic. Make it so top priority quickly and wow. carefully we leave no trace. Excellent work. Holy Have crap. With... Olaf. Come on, let's get this done. Hey. Can you start? Oh no. Hang in there, Olaf. You've only got a few shifts left. You're going home. He's desperately believing in this. What? You can't save you. Nothing to save. He's had a massive stroke. Mm. What are you doing? Putting him down. Uh. I can't help anyone. I need a bag in the trolley. He's coming. <sighs> He's lucky. He'll pass peacefully, which is more than I can say for the rest of us. His world's shattering around him right now. You want to keep your men in line? Hold him. You'll feel nothing. He's passed. They made a mistake. A man who was just released on four ended up back on two the next day. Well, got out on the floor and then they killed them all. Oh, wow. The people that work their time up just get cycled down to the bottom with brand new numbers. Holy shit. That's so fucked. This your friend is free. You two, on program now. Put him as far as away from their old team as possible in the hopes that nobody recognizes them. But on two, somebody caught wind and recognized somebody, I guess. Oh my and God, it's on each level. <laughs> Never more than 12. Woo! We got him on our team, man. Fuck, dude. Holy shit. Andy Circus has joined the party. <laughs> that was such a good episode. That was so tense, and just the way everything was parsed out throughout it. Ah, oh, and just we're seeing like the it's the empire closing in, and they're putting all these pieces together with Cassian, the stuff on Ferrix, with Axis, with Luthen, those connections. Oh man, Pack, they're gonna string up Pack. God, that's so frustrating. I hope we don't see it. I'm sure we will, but oh man. And Bix has her mind fried by this musical audio mix and match of these guttural sounds of this race being snuffed out or whatever. That's what it sounded like they were hinting at. They like recorded their death rattles or death cries and made some audio mixture of it all that just messes with your brain on top of that this this looming building slow secret has been creeping up within the facility itself the prison itself about these little events we see how they pass information back and to and from how you know they're layered in a way to keep the communication very difficult for anything to be relayed between any of the workers sectioned off like that and when a whole floor gets electrocuted raises some questions especially with how because he's running down his time he's almost out and then the, this old guy here on the team is like for, only 40 shifts away from getting out so he's like he's trying to help he believes that if he counts down the clock they can leave but no man holy crap that was a great way to reveal that i feel so bad for that guy dude 
Like something clearly was happening like throughout the whole thing. I thought maybe it was like he was older. So maybe I was thinking maybe it might be dementia and all that stuff. But no, he suffered a stroke on, on there and it just kept getting worse. And who knows how many little ones he may have had throughout the entire thing. Like, his, you know, he's always checking his hands. He was for, he was spacing out. You know, his head was writhing at times. So, something was definitely going on. And I, I mean, I've had grandparents with dementia, so that's kind of like where my head was going with it. But yeah, uh, Cassian's got some guys on the inside that he's built up some relationships with up at, uh, throughout this point, uh, kind of keeping track of things and trying to formulate a plan. And he was like, hey, if you are about to get out here, at least tell me what you know when he's talking to Andy Serkis over there about whatever. And he's like, no, no, no. He's just trying to keep his record clean, even if it is, ex even if Cassian is right, which I think he is, like they don't hear anything that's going on in there, but that they, uh, <laughs> oh God, that he's so, he has to give himself something to strive for and work for to make it through this. And he's got that so cemented in his mind that he's got to be pristine in every way, shape and form to not risk his departure and this realization that they're never getting out broke him. I love that. That was such a great turn at the end, especially since we've had that. How many guards on each level? How many guards on each level? Tell me, tell me, tell me. And he's like, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Talk amongst yourself or whatever, but leave me out of it. And now he's like, bam, numbers, receipts. Amatha's got missing money because of her donations that she's not had a proper bookkeeper and needs Skylar White up in here to make sure these books are nice and neat. <laughs> we only ended up like Ted. <laughs> oh, that was, that's, I love that shit. The revelation that Vel is Mom Mothma's cousin. You know, we had like the hints when Centra was like, uh, Cinta, sorry was talking about how, you know, her cover story could just be a just traveling uh, rich girl who just wants to get away from it all. And in a kind of a sour way that she kind of carried that forward, it seemed like that might be the truth. That might be where Vil came from. And a lot of people I saw were thinking that she might actually be like uh, Luthen's daughter or something like that related to Luthen. And that's how they have this connection where they talk, but nobody else in her team ever sees him. But no, it's Mon Mothma. That was crazy. That was a nice little twist and reveal. And then, yeah, it seems like everybody does seem to think she's having an affair with Tay, which kind of carries on what the daughter's about. And Mom Mothma, with her head and all these other things, you know, her daughter's just like, well, Dad lets me do anything. So it's like she's just, we see her in this attempt to do the what she perceives as the right thing, which I think arguably is the right thing. She's fighting for freedoms and to keep total control of this this body of power from encroaching down onto every last soul. She's trying her best to stave off Palpatine's reach as much as possible, but we just see the the little ways that these politicians are just checking out. Some are listening, but not enough. Might be enough to slow things down, but you just see it crumbling around her. I mean, to the point where in, what, five years, the Senate's d dissolved completely. So that was a wild thing. But like, like we see like how her mission, her sacrifice is kind of this relationship with her family, even though her husband seemingly is kind of a piece of shit. She's losing that relationship she's got with her daughter. She's the bad guy in like every situation because she's really putting all of herself into these other things, but she can't tell them or let them know anything that's going on, what she's actually doing. Maybe they would understand. The daughter maybe would understand. The circle that her husband keeps, I don't know that he would be a very supportive person to tell. I don't know, <laughs> but I doubt it. Uh, and the fact that they're keeping uh, Marva on watch, on standby as a backup bargaining chip is just gross. But in line with everything we've seen so far, it's been kind of crazy seeing all that kind of come through. But Cyril really pushing his luck and trying to like level up beyond this 
bureaucratic position he's currently in to get into the ISB, help with the mission, because that's really all he's been about is order and this dream of an ideal society. And he thought that this could be a gateway in there and it just kind of came off the complete wrong way. But I don't know how else he would think that would go any other direction. But I got to compliment the ambition. But this was a really interesting episode to see and like what just seeing everything evolve. But guys, I'd love to know your thoughts. So sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join our Discord. We could talk about it there as well. Links to that in all my social description box below. Remember, if you want to see the full-length reaction, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before you go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Share, Ryan, Karen, Philly Vane, Yori Koriska, Margaret Grace, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Raven McCann, Jeffrey Hale, and M. Sephiroth. Thank you guys so much for your continued support and everybody who's been helping the channel out. Love you guys. And I'll see you all next week with episode 10. May the force be with you always. Take care, everybody.